All right, so let's talk about the PDM, okay? We'll talk about the whole system, period. Um, it's, it's, very, it's a very simple setup. Pricey, but the way it works is simple. So, um, in theory, um, it starts with positive and ground from the battery. And from there, we go um, to a battery disconnect. From that battery disconnect, it basically feeds the PDM, okay? And the PDM, um, which is a 14 output PDM, basically controls all the functions that would normally be controlled by a fuse box, which would be um, your injectors, your, um, your coils, your, uh, you know, your high output um, sources on your car. Um, so in the PDM, the harness basically with the C101 plug, which is normally um, all your outputs and inputs via vice versa um, to feed your ECU, which is normally on a jumper harness. And the jumper harness um, is n not needed on the AEM Infinity here because it uses an AEM Infinity harness made by Rye Wire. So it's just a plug and play deal. Um, so there's minimal wiring to this. That being said, we'll go ahead and show you guys what the setup is basically. Um, so you have your PDM, your disconnect, power feeds the PDM, PDM feeds the ECU, and the ECU goes back and forth through the PDM to feed its output, which is fuel pumps, um, coils, etc. So it kind of simplifies everything and gets rid of every fuse in the car. There's not one fuse on this car, it's all electronic. Um, and with doing so, we eliminate a lot of error, obviously. But just to sum everything up, how simple it works, power goes into the PDM, PDM feeds the ECU, the ECU tells, hey, we need two fuel pumps to kick on, which is my lift pump and my standard pump that feeds the car, okay? So the PDM, the ECU signals the PDM, the PDM signals the outputs of the fuel pump. Brake lights, reverse lights, all that's ran through the PDM via the C101 plug. Um, so if you know the 20 pin connector, all the vital information or all the vital sources that's necessary is technically in that C101 plug. Um, so with that, with the PDM, it doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be touch screen, you know, keypad, canvas. You can simply use a um, switch panel or you can simply, uh, they offer three different options, the switch panel, the CAN bus, or the flying leads. And the flying leads basically would signal low, low side, which is ground, high side is positive. Um, so low side signals. So say you wanted to use your standard blinkers. All you would do is put a ground to um, the pin that actually is the common wire and the um, sources would be um, whatever you're blinking. So right blinker, left blinker would be the toggle up and down. And then you can simply two wires. It's very simple. So yes, we complicated it a little here, but at the same time we simplified everything. So here um, is the keypad. And um, in order for this keypad to get power, it needs to be powered up by a master switch through the PDM. And the PDM technically uh, gets powered here by a toggle. Okay, and there is a passcode set up to even give this all power, um, which I'm not going to show you guys because that's my security system, obviously. Um, but I will show you guys the basics. So um, just say you want your fans are kicked on normally through a, ther the, a thermomatic switch, um, thermomatic switch, which is uh, saying, okay, it's reading the ECTs at 190, the ECUs triggering the fans to come on at 190. And so with this PDM system, basically, it gives you the option to override any of these options. So say your fuel pumps normally kick on on a prime. So you'll hear me cut it off. You'll hear the fuel pumps come on, but you'll see these two light up. Okay. And they cut off just as normal. That's prime time. That's signal fed from the ECU this ground wire that goes to the c101 plug feeds the pdm the pdm tells hey kick on the two pumps very simple now in a case where you want to override 
the fuel pumps just say you have two pumps kicking on okay and one of the pumps is kind of clogged so you want to be like okay let me kick the second one on at all times instead of being triggered by boost or whatever you want it to be triggered by you can now override it and kick it on and lump it home which is doable now just say the same thing with your fans say your ect sensor goes out which is your head temperature the engine coolant temperature sensor just say that goes out now the ecu doesn't know when to kick the fans on so it gives you the option to override the fans very simple same with the water pump for the air to water that's controlled uh, via thermomatic switch by the intake air temperature so just say that sensor goes out it stays at 77 because that's like the default it doesn't know what to do um, so you can kick the fan and the water pump on overriding um, cockpit lighting that is basically my interior lighting because I lost all the interior lighting and then you have your right and left blinker um, which I have both ways so if I just want to do a quick turn I have it here just quick little blinker turn and if I want to set them um, ba basically a latching switch where I push it and then it doesn't stop blinking until I re-push it because obviously I don't have a re reset on the ignition um, basically push it on I could do my turn turn it off not a big deal um, and everything else is pretty simple headlights driving lights or headlights driving lights and then bright lights technically um, so I can turn the bright lights off or I could just turn the driving lights on I have them programmed so where they come on both at the same time uh, this being an EF the headlighting is just not the best so I do rock both headlights and brights at the same time so past that that sums up the PDM it's pretty simple plug and play um, it uses minimal wires to wire in the only wire I had to wire in technically on the PDM was the spare output for the um, front and rear which the rear goes to the cockpit lighting the front goes to the water pump um, and then I had to wire in the um, ground signal to the cluster because um, the AEM dash uses a six can module to actually read fuel level because it reads a canvas and you have to like get that converted into here so the only way to do that is to bring the signal which is the fuel level sending unit to that module that module will transfer it to here can bus and give you the proper fuel level sending unit so just wanted to explain that um, how it works to my best ability I'm not a professional at this stuff I just know what I know from doing this so um, that being said i wanted to share that information with you guys as well and thought this would be a good time to do so so right now we're going to go ahead and start her up it is 70 degrees ect 75 iats we're going to go ahead and get her cold start crank on um and then go from there now I just retuned the car, made its power. We've been fine tuning the cold start from here to there. And this isn't an excuse of why it may not start on the first try, but you do have to assume, and obviously you'll know this if you dealt with AEM Infinity on B-Series, that we don't use a distributor. There, that side is completely blocked off. We don't use the stock distributor for coil pickup or anything. It basically uses a T1 Halifax sensor, which is a magnet sensor, to read the magnets that's inside of the T1 cam gear. And it'll never know, it's, it'll never remember the sync because when I kill the power, it kills the power to the ECU. So it won't say, okay, I remember we're, you know, T4 on top dead center. It won't know that. So it takes one full rotation before it actually sinks the ECU and then I could show you guys that on the ECU if you on the laptop if you guys would like um, to show you how the syncing process starts after it sinks the startup is pretty simple um, but that's the downfall to the AEM also the upside because you have lease um, components to actually start the car at, which makes it more at the end of the day a more reliable build um, so let me grab the laptop i'll tap into the am infinity and i'll show you guys start sync and the start probability and how it works and how long it takes to delay before it actually kicks on and we'll do a cold start and maybe do another walk around of the actual pdm system okay so right now got the laptop on it is not online and so i master switch it kicks on
today or not okay there it is um, why I choose AEM Infinity over um, Hondata or um, any other system yeah Haltech, Motec, um, all those are good systems um, but I'm not building a race car although it's race car ish this is technically a street car. I like to drive this car on the streets and I like to have all the comfortabilities of doing so, which AM offers. Um, not only that, the variety of matching sensors, um, et cetera, everything just links together nice and easily. Matching the AM CD7 dash. You don't have any problems with trying to combine two of the two, like, um, which you don't, it's just a setting, you know, but I like everything to be, um, you know, pretty easy. But over Honda, you say 30 years of technology, okay, and you have 2022 technology. Um, how do you mix the two? Okay, so that's like basically saying, let me try to download Windows 10 or 11 or 12 onto my 30 year old laptop. That's not going to work really. Number one. Number two, it's a piggyback system, so it still relies on the vital information of the 30-year-old components, which can cause failure or cause an issue. Yes, I've seen cars do eight seconds on Honda. I've seen that. I've seen that, you know, but the drivability, the response time, the dual core processing, how fast it processes information is unbeatable and unmatched over a standalone, any standalone versus a piggyback system. I'm just anyone that argues that then we'll be in the comments so um that being said we have the start page on well not the start page this is diagnostics and it kind of tells you here start probability and sync state so the sync state is what i was telling you guys about the rotation before it actually recognizes sync and then the start probability will happen when the sync state changes so until then it won't start at all it won't kick fuel on or nothing so once we actually hit the start button you'll see a change and then it goes from one and then changes to 100 immediately so pretty much it recognizes sync gives it fuel and it starts right up without a problem i have no foot on the gas and i do not have an iac valve on this car um, it does not idle crazy high idles fine and that's the beauty of AM Infinity and why I choose it. Um, now the PDM on the other hand is another story on why that came about and why I decided to use it and I'll explain that right now. Okay, now the PDM, um, this thing is so awesome, man. So just say, let's go to switch outputs. see everything on there and as you see the water pumps on naturally controlled by the ECU obviously the two fuel pumps are controlled by the ECU obviously you have your keypad power which is my signal coming into the toggle back into there so that's letting you know that's on and then you have out to the ECU power so if you look here um, you can see the total amp draw which is 28 amps with the car running. There's my voltage. And you can see here when I kick this fan on how that changes. So now we're at 32, okay? Now the beauty of this is if there's ever a fuse issue, um, let's just pick one so you can see. Uh, just say, fan output one if there's ever a fuse issue it has three resets allowed so all i have to do is cut the power off and it resets turn the power back on and it's good to go the fuse is reset i never have to buy any fuses so that in a lifetime alone is worth the pdm alone um, and then the second option is so say uh this fan runs fan one runs at um eight amps as we just saw 
Um, now, 8 amps, this is set to 15. I can run all the way to 22 amps, so that means I have the capability to run up to 22 amps in cooling fan. Um, whether it be one big fan, two big fans, whatever, as long as I can get it up to 22 amps and under, it'll be fine. And uh, all I have to simply do is say, I added two new fans and instead of their 15 amps, instead of me having to rewire it, I can literally just change this to 20 and now I have a 20 amp fuse. So super simple. Um, it, it just makes things so easy and up to date with technology. That's why I chose the PDM over um, rewiring the car myself. Number one, Rywire offers a chassis for Honda Acura to just plug and play. So it makes the work very minimal. Um, and it makes it too easy to be like, why not do it? I mean, what you'll pay someone to troubleshoot a car or fix some wiring, um, which I would have had to do if I wasn't mechanically inclined this past week, I would have literally had to pay someone to troubleshoot whatever issue it had because it had a short. Um, and cutting it out and adding, you know, this system, losing 45 pounds of wire on top of that was a no-brainer for us. So just thought I'd share some of this information and how the PDM, the standalone, all communicate with each other. Um, like I mentioned in the previous video, everything is CAN bus related, which is a power ground twisted pair. And then you have CAN high and CAN low, which the CAN high and CAN low sends the signals of an in number code, basically. So say it needs to say 127 it can send that in 25 different number codes to get it to say 127 over two wires and the same with this all this is all CAN bus so it's all one four pin plug very simple very easy so you lose a lot of wiring you lose a lot of switches switch wirings you know terminal terminating etc so definitely a no-brainer hope you guys uh, found some of this information useful like I said, I'm not a professional, so I don't, I didn't design this. I don't, you know, know 100% of any of this. We're learning, and I'm sharing with you guys as I'm learning. Um, so that being said, like, subscribe, share, and hopefully when you Google PCM or P14 PDM or anything like that, this video pops up and helps you guys out. All right. So we're out. Start her up. Time to go.